this is Tara Jacoby and Patty Davis with Down to Earth Realty Team and Keller Williams Realty. Today we're going to be talking about staging your home on a budget. This is a grand example of what we're talking about. This home it has been, things have been limited out, it's been depersonalized and neutralized. Clean, limited items on all surfaces. And not clever. There's a limited amount of furniture. Now maybe if your family's bigger this wouldn't work for you for living purposes. You may think about that but the problem is is that if you have too much more the space feels smaller and crowded and less inviting. You see that the surfaces are not only clean but they're also cleared off. There's not the normal buildup of mail or keys or toys and things like that. What I like about this house is that the fact that they don't have a lot of furniture everywhere and there's a lot of floor space that's not cluttered and so you can easily walk around the home and it feels so much larger. I love all her things. <laughs> looking at all her cute little I think Patty's shopping. <laughs> this is just, look at her trash can. Oh, nice. You see, far too many times people will leave their trash cans out. Don't leave it out unless it looks like this. Wow. It almost is gonna feel sparse to you living in the house. But that's okay because, Patty, what does it do when a house feels sparse? It feels like you can move in your own items and see your things on these walls and how your furniture would fit in the spice because it's so uh, easily accessible. And Sometimes people say that it's hard to live in a staged home that's being that's on the market, but as this one is proof, this home already has offers on it. So let's talk about the cleanliness. Not only have all the surfaces been limited and you have a limited amount of decor and everything is nicely done, but everything is clean. You've got no dirty hand prints. It looks like they even wash down the doors. Stuff like this is normal living wear and tear that happens that really you don't start noticing until you're gonna go sell your house and then you go, gee, there's handprints all over my doors. So make sure when you're cleaning, it's actually a really good idea to hire a cleaner because they're gonna do everything for you. But if you don't have the money to do that, make sure you look at all surfaces, walls, trim especially, doors, all of that. That's exactly the way it should be when we walk into a home because somebody can picture their own things up on the walls. And they've taken out most of the furniture except for one, two, three pieces, four pieces on the other side. But it's nice and open and has lots of walking space. So in a house that isn't necessarily huge, it feels much bigger than Another design principle that I wanna point out are, is the scale of furniture. The scale is very important and Patty always says this, don't you Patty? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so walk into a room and go, whoa, oversized, oversized. So we want to make sure that furniture is appropriately sized for the room. You don't want anything too big. If this bed was a king size bed, you can kind of get the idea it would be way too big for this space. It's a queen and it is just right. If you had a tall dresser, if it was too tall, it would make the room feel closed in and small. Because it's at a lower level and cleared off above it, again makes the space feel so much wider and you actually you're visually your eyes going all the way back to here instead of stopping where the furniture is this home would get an a plus in staging and making it ready for a listing and ready for people to view it and this home had multiple offers on it in the first day